And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Shauna L. Francis, a former corporate executive who became an author and a channeler of the Galactic Federation of Light and many other highly evolved beings. Shauna, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks for having me. All right. So how did you go from being this corporate executive to somewhere completely different into a channeler of all these beings? It has been such an extraordinary journey. Um, and uh, in its most simplest here, I have had uh, what, what I would term a massive spiritual awakening. Uh, you know, it's like um, with the help of, you know, these etheric beings that you talked about, and not only kind of the Galactic Federation of Light, that they came later, it was archangels, my spirit guide, um, coming in in a very intense way that I could not ignore. Um, basically, Jeff, time to activate into my mission. <laughs> so yeah, I was um, living the uh, true American dream, mom, wife, soccer mom even, uh, really working hard at my career, climbing that corporate ladder. I, I did digital marketing for over 25 years, working with some of the biggest brands in the world. Um, and, uh, you know, actually not hating life, actually had, had a great life, um, to be quite honest. Um, always into the, you know, my mom was very um, into New Age. If you remember the 80s and the 90s with the New Age movement, um, that was my mom. So the Tarot was a you know big part of my world here. Um, alternative healing. I'm a Reiki master. Um, so I always thought my life would kind of, if it was going to go anywhere, outside of the corporate norm, it would have been alternative healing, Reiki, that kind of thing. I studied cranial sacral therapy for many, many years, but, um, you know, really buckling in on my career, um, about three and a half years ago, actually I picked up a book. I picked up a book. Um, it's a channeled book called the clarion call, and this is Archangel Metatron. And, Archangel Metatron. I had never even heard of Metatron. I mean, it was pretty far removed from this whole world, you know, three and a half years ago. Not really didn't, wasn't much into aliens, galactics, um, never heard of the ascension. Um, I kind of knew I was working with my spirit guides on some kind of a level, but wasn't really sure. But I picked up this book and it like kicked my butt. (laughs) It was like a two by four you know, hitting me over the head, uh, basically with this energy and this information started coming through. And I was just for 48 hours after starting that book, it was Labor Day. It was Labor Day. So I remember it clearly. Um, It's like nothing was ever going to be the same again. And they, you know, the team that came in, the etheric team that came in to help me with this awakening, they said, Shauna, the first half of your life is going to look nothing like the second half of your life. And that has really become the truth. (laughs) Were you a religious person before all this or would you consider yourself just spiritual? Uh, Yeah, definitely not religious. I, you know, pretty ignorant actually with even the major stories of the Bible, never really went to church. My grandmother was Mormon and very devout. Um, uh, My grandmother was Mormon. My mom really um, shunned the church <laughs> for various reasons. And so we really, we, um, yeah, very non-religious, I would say, upbringing, um, but spiritual, yes. Um, esoteric, metaphysical, yes, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Can you tell us about your spirit guide? My spirit guide, um, his name was Micah, and we'd had 20 lives together, according to a psychic. So I'd went and seen a psychic three and a half years ago, and he, she introduced me to Micah. And so that was quite amazing because at that point, Jeff, I'm like doing my thing, you know, been married for 25 years, uh, working the career thing. Kids are out of, out of the house and doing their thing here. Um, but you know, the spirit guide, Micah, it's like, I started journaling, uh, questions and answers with him. And I was really, that was the first point where I realized, whoa, this is, this is something beyond my normal waking consciousness is Shauna. Like this is something outside. Maybe he's a part of my consciousness, maybe a part of my higher self, but it's not me because I didn't, I asked a question that I didn't know the answer to and I got an answer back. And so that was just like this beautiful discovery. And then from there kind of to the book, this, you know, and, and, and understanding who Archangel Metatron is. And from there very quickly, it's like they laid out my mission for me, um, through, 
I guess, telepathy. You know, I wasn't calling it channeling back then, but I was journaling like crazy, a lot of questions and answers and uh, these beings coming in and, and really starting to talk to me about who I am, what I am and what I'm doing here. And boy, what, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was quite the um, roller coaster there for a while. And, you know, I'm three and a half years in, I'm just now really starting to accept what this is. Did you have any kind of event that caused your spiritual awakening, like through a, through a meditation or a dream or some kind of out of body experience, or was it just the information from this book that kind of reformulated your thinking? Yeah. It, I mean, it wasn't one big thing that happened. I think it was kind of a, I mean, within four weeks though, things had really changed in my world where I thought, wow, this is, there's something really incredible going on here. I was starting to kind of freak out. Uh, but, you know, it was first just, again, meeting that psychic who introduced me to my spirit guide mm -hmm. and then having that conversation with my spirit guide and then being led to this clarion called book. And Jeff, it wasn't so much about the book and the information as much as it was the energy influx that came in with reading that book. And then I am hearing Archangel Metatron when I'm not reading it. I'm hearing his voice. I am having conversations with my, my, my spirit guide and now with Archangel Metatron. So I'm like, wow, what is going on here? And the book, the book was incredible. There's four books in the series. They're all channeled. Um, two from Metatron, two from the Galactic Council. And they're, they're, they're a series. And that was really my first introduction to all these concepts, really to galactics and, and aliens and the, the idea of these highly evolved beings. And we're just such a small little player here on the planet as humanity. <laughs> you know, it's like really blew my, blew my top off, really. I'm glad you kind of brought that up because I wanted to know how do you connect with Micah was the psychic channeling Micah or now is my are you like Claire audience hearing Micah at the beginning it um she did not channel him but just said Micah is your guide I see him clearly he's here and he's wanting to let me you know tell you that you know you've had 20 lives together that you switch these roles and support for each other and have for a really long time um <clears throat> actually I was only working with Micah for maybe six or seven weeks and he transitioned away. He actually has left my team. And this was so I can graduate and Micah went out and I graduated up to Metatron. So it was like he had done what he could to get me where I needed to be basically to activate my awakening with Metatron. Um, but when he, when he transitioned away and I had no idea this could happen and I had to do research online to figure out, okay, this does happen. I felt it like an actual death, like like a part of my soul was being ripped out from within me. And I cried and cried and cried for hours at this separation that happened, um, you know, and then it was very, I mean, literally within a within three or four minutes of him going, I started hearing new voices coming in like, you're going to be fine. We've got you <laughs> and kind of the soothing stuff stuff that kind of helped, you know, again, and then there's just more and more people that were coming in etherically. But yeah, Micah, I think he's around, but I don't connect with him on a regular basis anymore. So when you were connecting with him, how was that? Or how did that happen? I think, you know, really in the beginning, it was, you know, it was a pen and a piece of paper journaling, and I would just have these questions. And I would, you know, just even as far as, hi, Micah, how are you today? And I would get answers back and I would write this stuff down. And, you know, uh, and I, I think any, I think everybody could do this. You know, if you really take the time to formulate a question, you know, we have free will and we have to be um, clear about what we want, right? They don't just jump in and take over. Um, they can't do that. It, it's, it thwarts our free will. So, you know, if you can get your pen and paper out and get, you know, set the intention to connect with your spirit guide and write that question out and ask for an answer and whatever comes to mind, write it down. Um, and then you go back and at, at, the, at the time it's coming through you, Jeff, it's coming through your own mind. So you think, oh, I knew this somehow. I must have known this. This feels like it's me. But you go back 10 minutes later and you read that answer and you think, wow, that wasn't me. I, I feel that that came from outside of me. So really it was, I guess, I wouldn't call it automatic writing so much as I would just say journaling, um, journaling of Q&A with him. That's how, and I was hearing the words come through. Is that how you do all your channeling? 
No, I mean, so I'm probably in touch with 25 to 30 beings. I have been in the last three years and they're, you know, they're all a little bit different, but basically like Metatron, a lot of, a lot of communication comes through energy, just pure energy field vibration. Um, and that gets my attention. That helps me go deeper. That helps me connect with them. Like our words are energy. You know, um, when I look at you in your eyes, there's an energy exchange happening, right? So if you think, you know, my thoughts are energy, your thoughts are energy and they impact the energy around you. Um, so just knowing that everything is energy, you just have these different ranges of things. So whether that's I'm hearing voices, I can hear voices pretty good. I'm starting to develop more my being able to see things more clearly. Um, Archangel Metatron has this knack for dropping thoughts and knowledge just right into me like a thought bomb. And all of a sudden I know something and I knew that came from him, but I, I know his energetic signature. I kind of know how he works. He can even say, I'm, this is Metatron. And then all of a sudden I know something that I didn't know before. So, um, yeah. And you know, when I, when I'm channeling, uh, like the Galactic Federation of Light, they're, they're coming in as a collective. So, um, I'll hear kind of a singular voice coming in at the beginning. And then pretty soon after a minute or two, I kind of let go. And I, it's a more of a stream of consciousness. It's just coming through. I'm even not even taking that time or that step to hear then speak. It's just, I'm speaking. It's coming through like, like the stream of consciousness. When you're channeling the Federation, are you consciously present or are you kind of like zoned out and you have to like record it and then go back and listen to it? It's somewhere in between. So I consider myself a conscious channel and, you know, those trance channels out there, like they're out, you know, and they're, they've kind of have a full body takeover, right? And they are, they're completely, out. so that's not me. I'm conscious. I can have my eyes open. I can be thinking as they're coming through, but I may remember 15% of it. And then the rest I don't remember. So normally I'm, I'm recording almost everything I can. If they're coming through, um, I grab my phone and I hit the record button um, or I grab my laptop and I'm typing or I'm making a video or something. So it's important for me in this journey to record what I've got going on. I, I will have dialogues in my mind with these guys, but I prefer to be kind of taking it more formal and more serious and to be kind of documenting it. Can you give us some examples of some of the things that you have channeled that has just blown you away? Again, you know, I was I was doing Google marketing for Nike as a vendor um, before all this happened. You know, I was just merrily on my way here with my my pretty stressful life here at corporate America, um, doing my marketing thing. Um, you know, so I would say, you know, working with my spirit guide. Okay, no problem. I got this. Okay. Archangel Metatron comes in. It's like, whoa, okay, this is getting a little more bizarre. Um, you know, and then it was like the Galactic Council coming in and talking with me. I'm like, okay, I've really lost my mind. But I will tell you, like, you know, my even with Micah, you know, he says, Shauna, the planet is speeding up in vibration. He didn't even say vibration. The planet is speeding up and you're going to be helping with this. So... I'm like, I had never even heard the word ascension. And here, this is basically in a nutshell, what I'm doing here is helping with this ascension. And we'll talk more about that later. But um, so that that was kind of interesting. Archangel Metatron. So he came in and said, Shauna, you're going to help with this ascension. You, um, you're going to write a book. You are going to move to Mexico. Oh, and by the way, your um, your main mission here is to help emancipate negative reptilian energy from the planet. I, I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. So I'd say Jeff, like that was the, that was some of the first stuff. I'm like, okay, we're not in Kansas anymore. What's happened here? I've just um, entered the twilight zone. Uh, but that was really, really hard to hear and hard to accept and hard to understand early, early on before I'd really talked a lot with my team about what that actually meant um, and you know what these beings are doing. So this whole reptilian information coming through early, early on was a big one. Uh, and then I would say on top of that, kind of um, in the last year and a half, year or so, working with the Galactic Federation of Light, I had Commander Ashtar come through and say, we need you to channel every day. We want you channeling every day. 
So for 100 days straight, I channeled the Galactic Federation of Light and put it on YouTube. <laughs> so that was like J July of last year. Um, I did that for 100 days. So there's a lot of things. I mean, I've um, quit my big corporate job. I did move to Mexico. Um, I uh, Off and on, I, 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 let's say I visited Mexico for many months on end and I meditated there and I did my shadow work and I came to grips with my life and I got in touch with my heart. Um, and really got, got just like coming to terms with my changed life and this whole idea of ascension and what is my mission here? What am I doing here? You know, and you're just, I mean, gosh, Jeff, you just, you question everything about your life and your world and everything you thought you knew about being on this planet as a human. Um, so like, so all of it, it's all crazy. It's all amazing. It's a lot. All right, you mentioned Commander Ashtar. I've never talked about this being. I don't even know if I've heard the name before. Can you tell us who is Commander Ashtar? He seems to be kind of the overall fleet commander of the Galactic Federation of Light. I'm sure there's many of them. Um, and, and honestly, he could be even a collective, but I think of him kind of as a singularity. It's hard to tell. But Ashtar... I mean, he's been around a long time helping us, you know, get used to the idea of galactics, of the ascension, of raising our consciousness, of bringing love and light um, here. Uh, you know, so we, you know, if you could imagine the Galactic Federation of Light, it is, um, it's a consortium, a group of many highly evolved races, beings who have signed up basically to um, fight the dark and bring homeostasis and kind of equilibrium where, where there are places that are out of alignment energetically and kind of leaning more toward the dark. And unfortunately, that's from what I understand from these guys, that's where we're at here, Mother Earth, humanity as a whole, right? We are, we're, we're tipped too far to the dark, the Galactic Federation of Light coming in to help um, bring some equilibrium and to help bring light here to the planet to help balance this out. Um, so Ashtar, Commander Ashtar, uh, quite a character and in charge and um, quite a big deal. A lot of people channel Ashtar actually. Um, and, you know, these channelings go back uh, several decades. So yeah, that's what I know about Ashtar. Is the Galactic Federation of Light basically the same thing as the Galactic Federation Honestly, I don't know, you know, and that's a, it's a great question and maybe something I can ask these guys. Um, there, there are just a multitude of groups and associations and councils and I mean, federations and I mean, it's, it's, it's mind boggling, um, all these different layers and realms. And I've kind of got to know this through other channeled material and through Archangel Metatron and those books and the Galactic Council books. So you just, you know, we're just having a peek, I think, Jeff, into just how complex, um, the hierarchies are and all the different groups that are that are around and that are, are built. So, I mean, I think, you know, imagine billions of beings are all, you know, and a lot of these folks are organized into some form or fashion doing certain roles, specific roles. Yeah. So I, you know, Galactic Federation versus Galactic Federation of Light. I really don't know. I mean, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell, you know, people are, you know, if you talk about, um, uh, other channelings and other things. You know, there's always new kinds of beings or groups or consortiums coming forward. So I just couldn't tell you. I, I would think so, but I don't know. I never paid close enough attention just to think Galactic Federation or Ad of Light at the end of it. When yeah. I, I think the first time I heard about the Galactic Federation is when the former general of Israel's some kind yeah. of military department. Time. Yeah. He's the one that said something about the Galactic Federation and about space. Did he say this, the Galactic Federation of Light? I don't think so. I think he just said Galactic Federation. But from what I can tell, they seem like, you know, he, he that, that particular man, um, talked about kind of consciousness and some of this stuff and we're just not ready. You know, mm -hmm. So it seems like those messages are, are in cahoots with each other. So I'd say they're, if they're not the exact same group, they're going to be similar in nature. Um, so I, I think, I, I think it's great though, right? Uh, Galactic Federation of Light, the Galactic Federation, you're, there's you're the Galactic Federation of Worlds, the Galactic Councils. I'm working with a new group of just 20. They're, they call themselves the Grand Council. Uh, so it's a little bit, yeah, my, you know, there's a lot going on here. 
Uh, that same guy, uh, I don't even know his name. I think you said Kaim. Haim, H Haim, I think. Haim, yeah, Haim. Haim. The most interesting thing I thought he said was that space is not what you think it is. Do you remember that part? And, and if so, do you have any comment on that? Oh my gosh. I don't think anything is what we think it is, Jeff. I mean, I really don't. I think <laughs> when you really start peeling these layers and get into just like the esoteric, really just like the, these concepts and get beyond the idea that we think we know what's going on here scientifically, I mean, we're just so, we're just scratching the surface here on what's true, what's real. You know, this is an illusion, right? I, I actually really believe this. Like, this, and I, if you'd asked me three and a half years ago and I would have been talking like this, I said, that person's crazy, <laughs> you know, because you, you just don't, we just don't know what we don't know. But um, I think, I think nothing is what we think it is. Space being just one small part of that. I mean, we are, we are, infinite souls of love, of light. We are all one with source. We are here having a temporary human experience in this um, environment we call earth. It's this particular denseness that provides a particular experience for our soul's evolution and growth. You know, it is, it's not the end all be all. And we are one of a bazillion uh, different species out there at different uh, rates of vibration. Um, yeah, space is not what we think it is. I absolutely agree with that. <laughs> We're just scratching the surface on what's real here, I think. Have you ever got any indication on how they travel here? Because planets or other star systems are so far away. Are they going through wormholes? Are they traveling interdimensionally? Yeah. So, I mean, there are portals, there are wormholes, there's interdimensional. There is just by thought, some of these beings are so highly evolved and such of such high vibration that it doesn't take much more than just an intention to be here. And then you've got the ships, you know, we've got supposedly, you know, the Galactic Federation of Light and uh, there's a fleet of ships that are just either outside of, you know, uh, outside of our vibration, so we can't see them. Um, we can't, but maybe we can sense them a little bit. You know, we'll we'll see what happens with disclosure. But you've got the actual ships, and you know, like portals here on the planet. And you know, I don't know for sure, but like even look at like um, the pyramids in Egypt as being uh, uh, ways for uh, like stargates, right? <laughs> for for interdimensional, interplanetary travel. So yeah, if you could just imagine, Jeff, that everything we know about physics and you know, what we know about travel and velocity and gravity and all this from our very limited perspective, we just don't really know how we don't have. Um, it, I think it's almost impossible for to us to conceive of all the different ways that you can manipulate time and space to be at a certain place that you want to be. So, yeah. Since you channeled the Galactic Federation for 100 days, do you see some kind of main message that they're trying to get across to us? Yes, and I'm so glad that you asked this. Mm. Their main message here, guys, is that we <laughs> we must be raising our consciousness here on the planet to be ready for what they're calling ascension, not what the galactic, I mean, they're, it's all like the Archangel Metatron. This isn't like a galactic federation of light thing. So the idea here is that the planet's vibration is speeding up. We are at a third density right now, 3D third dimensional density. So this is kind of, it's a pretty dense, you know, pretty dense. We're kind of lower on the totem pole in terms of the, the vibrational density here that we have access to. So we're at 3D. She's going to, Mother Earth is going to go to 5D and she's going to bring along with us everybody who wants to enjoy or move or evolve up into 5D in embodiment here in our skins. Um, so the Galactic Federation of Light is here to help us awaken to this whole concept of who and what we are. Um, I mean, and it's a huge paradigm shift in how we normally think of ourselves here on the planet. I mean, this is what makes my work I guess what I feel so difficult and so challenging. I mean, it's been three years and I'm still, you know, I channel these guys and I still have a hard time sometimes with these concepts and with believing this and with understanding it and embracing it. Um, you know, I'm, I, I consider myself to be um, a representative of the Galactic Federation of Light, but I still have so much more to learn. But the idea here, Jeff, is, is love. 
It is, um, and, th and this is, it, we're going to be going through kind of some different phases here of ascension, but right now it's about us um, embodying love and light as infinite beings, uh, infinite souls who never die, you know, knowing that we are here evolving toward source, evolving toward love, evolving toward light. Um, and until we are able to really kind of as a society get to this point, um, we're not going to be able to move forward very, very quickly in with disclosure of knowing ourselves as, as being galactic beings, of um, knowing uh, kind of a world that is based on on love and light and not all the things that we've got going on here on the planet right now that are wrong, that need fixing, that are negative. Um, so their message truly is, um, at this point at least, embodying love and light and evolving in that way. Have we started the ascension? My understanding is yes. Yeah, we've started this. Um, I think it's been, you know, you could even say that we've started this ascension back to the time of Jesus. So here we're a couple thousand years into this ascension, if you really want to think about it. You know, he came and tried to, it, you know, it's a very similar set of messages. Sananda, uh, Yeshua, you know, Jesus, um, the, the the messages that he tried to bring forth here, they're the same. They're very similar in message to now um, and to what even the Galactic Federation of Light, Archangel Metatron. We've got a whole host of ascended masters coming through right now. Um, it's truly like uh, it's all hands on deck to help Earth awaken. Um, and disclosure, the Galactic Federation of Light, that's that could be part of it. Although I don't think you have to believe in aliens or any of this to awaken or to ascend even. Um, but we've got to we've got to get past this duality, this um, kind of this negative way that we relate to each other and relate to ourselves, the fear that's permeated here. You know, the GFL is really asking. Rise above, bring yourself up, guys, see who and what you are and and understand where you fit. You know, this is this is not what we're meant to do. It's just, you know live on this planet and be miserable and not evolve and just be on the hamster wheel. Did you get any type of sense of where we are at on the timeline of Ascension? Oh, this is, a, it's such a, it's a frustrating question. Um, the GFL for me personally, they really don't give me timelines except to say, we are in charge of the timeline based on our intentions. Um, that, you know, it is our vibration that is going to help this planet get to a better place and to help us ascend and to help Mother Earth ascend. So really, they put that onus back on us to be in charge of the timelines. Um, Archangel Metatron, through another channeler, has said that we're in a 50-year cycle and we're like 12 years into this 50-year cycle. Um, although I don't really know what happens, what's supposed to be happening by the end of the 50 years, you know, so you kind of get a sense, um, you know, I don't think we're a year. I don't think we have a year or two. I think we've got many years before this all kind of plays out the way I think it might. Um, yeah. So, you know, I would love to say in six months, we're going to have full disclosure and everybody's going to be awakened, but I don't think so. I think this is going to take some time. Um, and it's like a, it's like not forcing the, the bud of the flower to open. Like you can't peel those petals open and force this. You've got to kind of allow this to open up naturally, allow all of humanity to kind of step into their sovereignty and step into their freedom, step into their love and light. Naturally, it's not something that can be forced. But yeah, timelines are tough. Um, all I know from my team right now, it's urgent. It, the time is now to get serious about this. Um, <clears throat> you can kind of get the sense of the frenetic uh, atmosphere, the energy on the planet, you know, things are speeding up here. We are in the ascension. What about full disclosure? Any, any timeline on that? Well, it's interesting because my feeling is, <clears throat> is that we've already had full disclosure. I mean, this is happening all the time. <clears throat> there's, there's irrefutable evidence. There is <clears throat> people like me who can channel, you know, it's like if I can channel, anybody can do it kind of thing. Um, you know, <clears throat> having a ship kind of land in an open field somewhere, you know, that hasn't, maybe that, it probably has happened. And it's, <laughs> they've been here forever and they've never left. So now it's just this batch of humanity coming to realize this. But um, I don't have an, I don't have a date, but I think, you know, if I had to guess, 
And if I kind of tune in here, like within the next, say, two to three years or so, but but know that disclosure is happening now. There's a trickle, trickle, trickle happening, even with the Pentagon Papers and 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 the the guy from Israel coming forward. Um, this, you know, this is being trickled out to the masses. Um, where, where they're acclimating us to this idea more and more. Do you ever think we'll get to the point where we'll just see aliens face to face walking around on our planet and? living here among the rest of us? I do. I do. It's actually a big part of the ascension here. Um, you know, this first <clears throat> this first part here is raising our, our consciousness and embracing love. Um, even like your Corey Goods and your uh, David Wilcox, these, these guys who are kind of big in the ufology and have been around for a long time, um, they talk about this as well. It is literally, this is what humanity is being asked to do right now is to raise our consciousness, to rise above fear, to embrace love. These are choices we're being asked to make right now. Um, as more and more people do this, the more we're going to have a chance to have full disclosure and these <clears throat> they'll come down and they're going to help us. Right. So my understanding is, <laughs> uh, you know, we've got technology that's been suppressed here um, that only the kind of uh, elite have been using on the planet. They're galactic in nature. These, these galactics are going to uh, change our world in terms of our technologies, our infrastructure, um, how we do medicine, our longevity, uh, all these things. So yeah, I do think, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it'll be a while before they're walking around with us. Although you talk to some people, they're already here. They're already doing this. We just um, are not fully conscious of them, or some of us are, but a lot of us aren't, but they're already here. Can you tell us more about the reptilian energy that's on the planet? So the GFL has talked quite a bit through my channeling about the negative, like this undercurrent of negative reptilian energy that ha it's really saturating our experience here so much so that we can't even see the forest for the trees. Like it has just become our normal here. Um, you know, and timelines are fun funky, but you know, imagine reptilians coming in thousands of years ago um, and and supposedly have worked with our governments. I, my my guides at the GFL don't get, give me super specific information, but there's, you know, if you do a little bit of research, um, reptilians have been around a long time working with our governments, um, even back in the, you know, helping craft, uh, you know, our DNA, um, kind of uh, helping create humanity and what we are today. So I don't have all the specifics with this type of thing, but you know, the idea here and what the GFL has said directly to me is that the uh, reptilian, we're talking about ETs here, you know, negative reptilians, and there are positive reptilians. There are good reptilians out there of the light, by the way. So there's certain reptilian factions uh, who really are loving the, um, power, control, uh, influence over humanity here on the planet. They've been here a long time, again, so much so that we don't even really realize that they're there. Um, but this energy is important and they feed off of our fear energy. So if you, again, like I talked about, Jeff, everything's energy, right? Everything's energy. So um, the reptilian <laughs> I know it just sounds so crazy, right? But the, you know, the reptilian forces here are really what the GFL has come to um, kind of remove. Um, and, you know, me being a part of the GFL here on the planet, working on this mission of ascension to help emancipate negative reptilian energy, everything's energetic. So it's bringing light, bringing love, bringing awareness, consciousness to this concept that there even is a reptilian influencer, you know, it's like you think about all the different things uh, mentally people have to, the loops you've got to go through, the hoops you've got to go through to understand just the fact that there could even be a reptilian presence. You know, if, if you're if you're on this, you know, watching this podcast and you're thinking, I have no idea that there's any such thing as aliens. Um, you've got a few leaps to make to where you can even be thinking about reptilians. And then not only that, reptilians having an influence here on our energy fields, on our psyche, on our infrastructure, on our financial systems, in our politics. Uh, you know, it's like, it's, it, it's a couple of, it's several layers of, of leaps here, right? To, to, to do this. But yeah, the understanding here is that they're here. They've been here. They don't want to leave. Um, they're hanging on for dear life here to the world, this world, exploiting us, exploiting our ignorance, exploiting humanity for their gain. Um, and I, it gets pretty nasty what they're doing. I mean, it's things like you, 
um, you know, it's, it's scary stuff, right? Um, and it's just been just under the radar for us. But even, gosh, Jeff, so three years ago, I, you know, when they started talking to me about reptilians, I, I, you know, David Icke is out there. There was very little information about it. But now there's so much more information about reptilians, so much more channeled material coming through. And then I think just collectively so much more acceptance of this as a concept, What do your family and friends that have known you for a long time think about the new you? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. You know, now, now that I, you know, I didn't just give this up, you know, I'm three years into this. I've, (laughs) I've published a couple of books. You know, one is a channel book on the Ascension itself. And one is my actual, this is my awakening experience. You know, I, I mean, I published this, you know, I, I, you know, I think at first they were absolutely appalled by what was going on with me and did not know what to think. I think, you know, my husband, my kids, my dad, you know, um, my friends kind of trying to show some support there. Um, but now that I'm over this hump and I'm really fully committed, committed to my mission here, I also have like a, a worldwide healing practice, spiritual healing practice. Um, I've worked with people from all around the world who are having similar awakening experiences, the crazy stuff going on in their worlds they need somebody to talk to or trying to figure out what their mission is. They know they're a light worker. They know they're a star seed. Um, So I think my family seeing my commitment and my um, confidence in this has helped them come to terms with it. Um, And I would say now I tell my family everything. I tell them what's going on and there's so much love and support. I've got family members who have been watching my YouTube channel, my channelings, unbeknownst to me, (laughs) you know, so I was like, oh, I don't even know if I wanted people to even find me online, like my family and friends and my old coworkers, but I'm much, much better now. But at first it was really hard. And, and also because I thought I was also losing my mind, I knew something was going on and I couldn't ignore this, but, um, I was having a hard time coming to grips with it. But now that I've got the acceptance and I've had some success here and I'm helping people, um, they're, they're much more um, accepting of it as well. Can you tell us any more how you've changed personally over the last couple of years? Yeah. Um, you know, I would say, I'd say I'm still me, but I'm completely different. Um, you know, if you think about, Again, if you you just kind of follow the party line and all the expectations of who and what you are as a as a female, you know, middle aged person on the planet, a mom, a daughter, uh, a sister, uh, a wife, you know, you kind of we kind of get into this thing. We just kind of play these roles almost um, we just take it for granted or we kind of sleepwalk through our experience sometimes, I think. And, uh, you know without being fully conscious, I think, you know, the idea here is that I'm feeling much more conscious. I'm feeling much more self-aware. I'm, I'm knowing, I'm knowing myself in a whole different light in terms of understanding that this is an illusion that we have crafted. We're all sharing in this collective illusion to evolve as a soul. Um, you know, so when you understand this, um, it really changes everything. And, and when you understand that every person you come into contact with is also going through this similar type of, of, exi- of experience, like they are also here learning and burning off karma and experiencing things, you know, like it, you're, you're able to understand that everybody is in a learning curve, you know, um, and it helps remove judgment for people and judgment for myself, knowing that I've done the best I could with what I've known to get to this point. Now I'm something different here. I'm a representative of the Galactic Federation of Light. I'm helping other people, you know, evolve and awake, awaken. So it's, it, I mean, I, I would say, Jeff, that, you know, I'm still me, but everything's changed. Everything has changed for me and for the better. Um, and it's, you know, this is about light and love and fun and joy uh, and, you um, really loving yourself, Jeff, unconditionally and finding things that make your heart sing and, you know, uh, fill you with joy. You know, it's time to be selfish. Uh, I think we, we, um, a lot of us are caretakers and want to make sure everybody else around us is okay. But now for the first time in my life, it's like, what do I want to do? What does my heart want? 
and not worrying about what everybody else wants and, you know, making sure everybody else is okay. So from that point, I've become a lot more selfish. <laughs> and then just uh, the ability to talk with these beings interdimensionally. Um, what an honor, what a joy. I'm so humbled by it. I'm just so appreciative of my, my, my ability to interact at this level and to help at this level. It's a dream come true to be of service in this way. Have you ever gotten any information about global warming and where the planet is? No, you know, I do, um, my team so far really hasn't, we haven't really dug into the um, environmental impacts of what we're doing, but, you know, yeah, global warming, <laughs> we, you know, the, the, the planet's vibrational speed, it is speeding up, right? Our vibration here is speeding up. Humanity is feeling this. This is why it's so hard for so many people on the planet right now. Um, the vibrations are raising on the planet. I fully believe that. And it's also shaking up um, Earth's environment. Her, you know, um, we've got, you know, the droughts, the earthquakes, uh, tornadoes, uh, the oceans are rising, the cap, the polar ca ice caps are melting. You know, this is, I think, really all part, part of it. And We've done a huge disservice to Mother Earth with what, what you know what we're doing here on the planet to um, hurt her in so many ways. <laughs> but no, I don't have anything specific from the GFL. What's your take? I don't know. I, so I was I was hoping that I'd get it from somebody you channeled. You know, maybe something's going on. Eva said it before that ETs are here terraforming the Earth and heating it up for them. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well. I mean, I can t kind of tune in here and we'll see if the GFL wants to come through and, and address this. But let me make sure I'm understanding what you're what you're saying. So this is kind of more conspiracy type theory stuff, Jeff, in terms of. Well, not really. I mean, you could just say, what is the cause of the global warming? Is it just man-made cause or do you feel like it's, you know, something else? All right. So let's see if the GFL wants to come through and actually address any of this here. Hi, Shawnee. Yes. Global warming. Everything is energy. Everything is energetic. So there's a perception here that the global warming is actually trapping of gases here on the planet through the ruinization of the ozone layer here. But truly, this is actually happening on an energetic level, this feeling, this covering here of the planet and it is it is actually being caused by so much more than what you would just expect here in terms of the fossil fuel burning the coal burning the emissions from your cars the emissions from your factories this also has to do with the consciousness here on the planet, with the energetic frequency of this planet. So as things here speed up, as the vibration raises, you will also get the environmental impacts of this. And it is far reaching. It is a global impact here. So just know that in actuality, there are many people here in place on the planet right now, helping to control global warming where it can be controlled. But also there are some natural processes here at play, at work, and it is all divine. It is all divine. So we ask that those of you who are extremely worried about the global warming, the environmental impacts of humanity on this planet, or even other entities uh, on this planet, we'd ask that you take the time to go inward to be centered, to be in love, to be in light, to keep your vibrations high. Because you as a singularity sitting here in this moment, it does you no good to be worried about these global phenomena when you are not necessarily in a position to make a huge impact. So just know, my dear ones, that there are people, programs, processes in place right now to control what can be controlled and to help mitigate where it can be mitigated. But otherwise, this is all divine and is exactly where you need to be right now. Okay. Thank you, GFL, yeah, for that. Yeah. yeah. Would you consider yourself a star seed? You know, I do. Yeah. I mean, that's a funny word, right? Star seed. I think... You know, I think all, 
I don't think there's probably any single human on the planet who is not of a different origin of, uh, at some point. Um, you know, we could talk about past lives and that kind of thing, but I think, uh, you know, this isn't our first rodeo. I mean, I think there's very few souls that have just never been anywhere else and only on earth, right? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, star seed for sure. Light, light worker I identify with more, just it's a, I think it's a little more general and all encompassing, uh, but star seed, I, I would say yes as well. I mean, we are here, um, there's many of us here who are, who've raised a hand to, and we have this mission to bring love and light here to the planet in our own unique ways. Um, yeah, we're seated here on the planet to do this. But I, again, I think I think most everybody is galactic in nature. We've all had different lives in different dimensions, different places, different realms, different planets. Um, and this is just one of many stops that our soul makes. I've checked out your YouTube, but I haven't looked obviously at all the videos. Can you tell us what type of content you're producing there? On YouTube, I'm basically I considered my channel to be really owned by the Galactic Federation of Light. Um, although I have channeled on my YouTube, I've got a Pleiadian guide by the name of Siri. I've got um, actually Bashar has come through another um, entity. Um, I've got the Melchizedek, and that's another. You know, th these guys are coming through Metatron. So um, I have some guest speakers that come on to the YouTube channel, but um, li literally, this is these are the Galactic federation of light coming through with messages mainly for people who are resonating with the energetic frequency that is being emitted through these transmissions it's like a homing beacon so i consider myself a beacon right and you know jeff you're a beacon with what you're doing you're putting out an energetic frequency here that is helping awaken people um, it's helping us become more conscious and more aware of what, what truly is going on here, um, helping us get out of fear and more into love. But um, <clears throat> yeah, the GFL, I get a kind of a, an energetic signature here, and I hear them say, Sean, we'd like to make a video today. So I'm like, okay. So I did it for 100 days, but I've done it um, once or twice a month since then. So I've got probably 150 videos um, that are free content on my YouTube channel right now. Again, GFL, but um, other entities as well. And what is the name of your YouTube channel? Sean L. Francis. Okay. Sean L. Francis, yep. All right, and I'll put a link to that in the description. You mentioned uh, the McKazel deck, and I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I wanted to know who it is or who they are. Yeah, Melchizedek. So, um, they are a priesthood of sorts. They are a collective. They are ancient from what I understand. And they're kind of like the special ops. Um, so like they take on special projects. So it's kind of different from the Galactic Federation of Life. But these guys are highly evolved. Um, I don't know if your, your viewers are going to know Paul Selig, but Paul Selig has channeled, I think, eight books by Melchizedek. And he calls those guys uh, the guides. Um, so his guides are Melchizedek. Um, and there's some other channel material with Melchizedek, but these, it's a pre highly evolved priesthood. I think they're etheric in nature. I don't think they're in an, any kind of embodiment right now. I think they've evolved beyond that. But again, here forever to help humanity, um, help us ascend, help us, help us get to the next level in our evolution. All right. So I mentioned in the beginning that you're an author and I think you have two or three books out. Am I right about that? Two books. Yeah, I've got out? I've got two books. Yeah, what I've got are a, those? Yeah. Um, sorry, just so the, I channeled this really tiny uh, book. You can read it in ninety minutes. Um, the cosmic unveiling of a new earth. So archangels, aliens, and prophecies. The cosmic unveiling of a new earth. So I I did this. I channeled this early on in my awakening um, by an ascended master, and uh, that's a quick read, an overview, an introduction to the ascension and what we can be doing right now. And then I've uh, basically my whole awakening journey. Um, I am the beacon. Um, this is full of channelings about the ascension, my internal processes, all the pain and suffering of going through this process in the beginning and trying to maneuver these concepts and understand, you know, basically who and what I am and why I'm here and what this means and this mission. I'm coming to grips with all of that, um, working with my twin flame, yeah, those are my two books, and they're on Amazon. All right. And I also noticed you do re retreats, right? Yeah. Can you tell us more about those? 
Yeah. So <clears throat> I am, I bought some property in Mexico and I've just started running spiritual retreats from this. Um, Casitas de Cortez, um, on Shauna L. Francis.com. Um, I will post, be posting more information about my retreats, but you know, getting together in a small group and getting in touch with your guides, uh, helping you channel, um, doing some meditation, having a reset, you know, kind of getting out of our routines, really focusing on us, on our, on our energies and, um, you know, helping further our consciousness around all of this. So, you know, kind of those are the goals of, of these, of these retreats. So I'll, I'll be doing more and more. Um, next batch will be the spring of 2022. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. If you're open to that, should they do that on Facebook or on your, or find you on your website or where? My website's the best. And there's a contact form there, shaunalfrancis.com slash contact or shauna at shaunalfrancis.com um, via email. I'd love to get your emails. Love to have a contact there. Um, even through YouTube comments on my videos, I read all the comments. Uh, so yeah, Facebook's okay, but I'm not, I'm not quite as active. I do have, um, a Facebook group, Starseed Lifestyle with Shauna L. Francis, and I would love to have your viewers join me there and we can have a dialogue. Well, that's great. Yeah. Do you have anything else that you're working on that you want us to know about? Yeah. Um, so the Galactic Federation of Light has asked me to be taking the channeling on the road and actually, uh, you know, they're telling me where to go and all this good stuff. So I just did my first live channeling event in Portland. So I have a live audience. So it's not just sitting here with my computer or my phone, you know, doing a channeling by myself for YouTube, but it's like literally sitting in front of a live audience. Um, and it's, it's incredible. And um, I'm still, you know, getting used to this idea, but I'm going to be in Seattle this Saturday, December 4th doing live channeling. And then I'm going to be in Boise, Idaho, January 22nd, doing live channeling. And St. Germain, who's an ascended master, is doing the introductions. And then I've got the Galactic Federation of Light um, talking to light workers about the ascension and about what we can be doing. So I'm taking it on the road, Jeff. I'm, I'm doing this live. That's great. Yeah, thanks. All right. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? You are an infinite soul of love and light, and there is nothing that can stop your light from shining. It is just a decision that you get to make about who and what you are. So embrace that, guys. Let's be in love here. Let's get rid of the fear, get rid of the judgment, and the negativity, rise above all that, and really just be beacons of light here on the planet. Thank you for that message, Shauna, and thank you for being our guest. I really wish you the best and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Jeff, so much for everything that you do as well. Thanks for this opportunity. It's my pleasure. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.